Hello, listeners. Welcome to Furs, Fins, and Feathers, a podcast presented by the Wyoming Game and Fish Department. I'm Parker. And I'm Francis. In each episode, we will discuss a Wyoming wildlife species and the features that make it so incredible. <laughs> Parker, that was really loud. Sorry, I was just working on my elk bugle. I had just dug this thing out of my closet, and I'm trying to get the dust out of it. Oh, my gosh. It sounds like you need a lot of practice before the season comes. I know. That's why I'm practicing. (laughs) Okay. So it didn't sound like an elk at all? Not even a little. All right. Well, elk are one of my favorite animals. Um, Did you know there are five subspecies of elk in North America? That is amazing. I had no idea. I love your energy and your enthusiasm, but I think we have to hold on for a second. All right. Because we have to explain the rules to our wildlife rating system. So, during each episode, we'll be scoring a Wyoming wildlife species on a scale of 1 to 10 for varying categories, which include mobility, size, accessories, style, intimidation factor, and my personal favorite, the old razzle-dazzle. We then combine all of those categories into their overall wild rating. W-Y-L-D, get it? Wild. I Wild. got it. I love it. <laughs> so you may be wondering, how can we objectively rate the razzle-dazzle of an animal? Well, we can't. Nope, not at all. Not even a little. This is totally subjective based on how Parker and I feel about these animals. Real gut feeling. Yeah, so if you agree, if you have different ratings, if you have other facts that you want us to know about these critters, please share them. Let's get started. First up is mobility. Mobility is exactly what it sounds like. How mobile is that animal? Is it fast? Is it slow? Does it go long distances? For elk, I give them a 6 out of 10. Elk are pretty fast. They can run up to 40 miles an hour. But there are faster animals in Wyoming. What do you think, Francis? All right. So I had a similar rating. I'm giving them a 7 out of 10. And because I do agree that elk can run pretty darn fast, but... I gave them an additional point because of their seasonal migration patterns, which means how they move from their higher elevations to their lower range areas for the winter and then go back up to their higher ranges for the summer. That's kind of what the migration for elk is. Yeah, how far do they go? So I did some research, and the Jackson region elk will travel up to 168 miles twice a year so they travel 168 miles from their higher range to their lower elevation ranges for the winter 168 miles total for that one attempt and then an additional 168 miles back to their higher range oh my goodness so that's like 300 and something or another miles miles. yeah that's a whole bunch of miles i know i thought that was really impressive so seven out of ten because of their migration patterns Our next category is size. Size is determined based on exactly what size means. How big they are, how small they are, maybe how long, how short. Just the general size. Does that make sense, Parker? Yeah, makes a lot of sense. All right. So I give elk an 8 out of 10 on their size. And that's because they are the third largest mammal in Wyoming, standing five feet tall. And that's just to their shoulder. Just to their shoulder? Yeah. So imagine five feet to their shoulder and an additional, you know, couple feet if it's a bull elk with those antlers on top of their head for a cow, at least another foot or two. So pretty crazy. Francis, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but how tall are you? (laughs) I mean, I'm about 5'5". So if you put that into perspective... So you're just barely looking down at an elk's shoulder, and it's probably looking down at you with its face. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. What do you think? I completely agree. I'm also going to give it an 8 out of 10. And you talked about height. I'm going to talk about weight. A mature bull elk can weigh up to 700 pounds. 700. Which is several of me. Quite a few of me. Um, It's just enormous. Now that size is all wrapped up, let's talk about accessories. Accessories are those part of an animal that help them live their life. It might be a special hoof adaptation. It might be some kind of head ornament. Uh, There are all kinds of accessories. For elk, 
I'm going to give them an 8 out of 10. Rocky Mountain Elk, which are the elk subspecies that we have here in Wyoming. I know I mentioned those five subspecies earlier. That's one of them. Uh, they have the largest antlers of any elk subspecies. Really? Yeah. The antlers can be up to 20 pounds for a pair and up to four feet long. Sorry, I'm just trying to like wrap my head around how big that is. Yeah, that's like doing curls with elk antlers. Well, now I'm thinking of my height again. I'm 5'4". That's four feet long just for an antler? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So you think about that five foot at the shoulder and then four feet on top of that. Wow. Yeah. What do you think, Francis? I'm going to give them a 7 out of 10. I do think the antlers are really cool. But all elk have two ivory teeth on their upper jaw. And the ivory is the same material that elephant tusks are made of. No way. So they have like little elephant tusks in their mouth? (laughs) I mean, they don't look like elephant tusks. They're just made of the same material. That's super cool still. I think so too. Our next category is style. All right. This may be a hot take. Some people may not agree with me, but I'm going to say it. Elk, not attractive. What? I'm giving them a 4 out of 10. (laughs) Only two colors. Boring. I think you're being a little harsh. I disagree. What do you think? I, I... I think they're a five out of 10. I mean, it's, it's not that much better, but there are some cool things about them. For example, they shed their coat at different times of the year to help better blend into their environment. So in the winter, they shed to a lighter coat. In the summer, they have a darker coat. They also have darker legs and lighter bodies so that when they're walking through the forest, they just look like trees on the bottom. And when we get on the fields, uh, their bodies blend in with the fields. I think that's super cool. Not like, 10 out of 10, cool, but 5 out of 10, for sure. All right. I agree with you there, but I'm still sticking with my 4 out of 10. All right. Next up is intimidation factor. Intimidation factor is how intimidating the animal is to other animals. It could be animals of its own species. It could be animals of other species, especially if it eats them. For elk, they don't really eat other animals, mostly just grass and twigs. So we're going to focus on how intimidating they are to members of their own species. Or at least I am. Francis, you can do what you want. I'm going to give them a 7 out of 10. And remember back, we talked about size. We talked about mobility. We talked about accessories. They all kind of blend together for that intimidation factor. They run 40 miles an hour. They weigh 700 pounds. And they have these four-foot-long antlers that weigh 20 pounds on their head. They use those antlers to fight with each other. So two 700-pound animals coming together and fighting with four-foot-long swords on their heads. Isn't that super intimidating, Francis? I would be really, really scared if I was an elk, for sure. Yeah. What do you think? Okay. So I'm going to give them a 5 out of 10. And that is because only male elk, called bull elk, have antlers. So only half the population have that super crazy 7 out of 10 intimidation factor. I guess that's fair. Okay. And I know you said you're focusing on how elk intimidate other elk. I'm going to focus on how, how elk intimidate me. And the only thing I'm worried about when it comes to elk is those hooves. Yeah. I do not want to get too close because it would not feel good to get kicked or stomped on. I can't imagine it would. Yeah. 700 pounds of stomping force. Oh, I'd be flattened for sure. All right. Last but certainly not least, the old razzle-dazzle. The razzle-dazzle is essentially a very unique aspect about the critter that makes them different than any other animal. Right, Parker? Yeah, it's like that, that special thing that doesn't fit in any other category, but is just so cool about them. Exactly. So, for elk, I'm giving them an 8 out of 10 for one reason and one reason only. Can you guess what it is? I think I know what it is. It's their mysterious and chilling bugle. There is truly no other animal call like it. You stole mine. I think you're looking at my paper. No, absolutely not. What do you think? I agree with you completely. I'll give him an 8 out of 10 for the bugle, but then I'm going to add another point. Holy cow. I know. So a 9 out of 10 for elk for all of the other little sounds they make. So just like with the antlers that you talked about in Intimidation Factor, only bulls bugle. But cows, which are female elk, and calves, which are young elk, 
make all kinds of other noises to communicate with each other. They have their own little language and they talk to each other throughout the woods. There's not a lot of animals that do that. They have conversations just like people. I don't know what they're saying, but I'm sure it's interesting. Now that we've finished with all the individual categories, it's time for the wild rating. The wild rating is the average of all the scores we've given these animals across the categories. So with that being said, drum roll, please. Elk receive a 7 out of 10. That's pretty good. That's very impressive for our first one. Awesome. So now that you've learned about these amazing animals, you may be interested in experiencing them in nature. There are a few options with elk, but before you head out and do these activities, always keep your safety in mind. One of the best ways to experience elk is just by watching them do elk things. Uh, We have elk all over the state, so you can go out pretty much anywhere and look for elk. They're not always easy to find, but they're normally in big groups. So if you find one, you'll find a lot of them. If you find a big group, you might want to capture that experience. And photography can be a great way to do that. You don't need a big, fancy, expensive camera. You can do it with your cell phone. You can do it with a disposable camera. You can do it in a lot of different ways. Finally, if you're interested in hunting, elk hunting can be really, really rewarding. I enjoy elk hunting a lot. Francis, do you enjoy elk hunting? I sure do. Especially in September for me because they're bugling and you can almost follow the sound versus even looking for them. It can be really, really rewarding and a great way to fill your freezer. Oh man, that was fun. I'm already looking forward to the next episode. Are you? 